Good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to this Tuesday morning session of the Diggers and Dealers Conference on a beautiful, sunny Kalgoorlie day. Um, we're going to get right into it this morning. And the first presentation we have is from Fraser McCorkadale um, from Newcrest Mining, who is joining us um, from beaming in from Melbourne today, as he couldn't make it to Perth. Um, welcome, um, Fraser. Um, Fraser is the General Manager of Exploration for Newcrest Mining. He's worked for Newcrest since 1997. He's had over 30 years' experience in gold exploration, with a focus on epithermal and porphyry-style deposits, working in Australia, Indonesia and PMG. During this time, he's been part of teams that have discoveries within all, within all of these regions. Um, Fraser's been General Manager Exploration for over six years and is responsible for both Greenfield and Brownfield Exploration within Newcrest. He has led the refocus of Newcrest's exploration back into Greenfield Exploration, leads a global Greenfield Exploration team that's exploring in Australia and in the Americas. Fraser received the 2020 Collins Space Award granted by the Association for Mineral Exploration for Excellence in Global Mining Exploration for his efforts in co-leading the discovery and fast-track exploration of the Haveron project in the Patterson province of Western Australia. Um, welcome from Melbourne, Fraser. All right, thank you very much. Um, it's a bit of an honour to kick off the second day. I apologise for the early start. Um, from the guy from our team on the ground, it sounded like yesterday was pretty good, and I must admit, watched most of the presentations online yesterday, um, and it's a pretty high standard to meet today. I wished I was there, but that's the world we live in right now. Um, obviously, being the general manager of exploration and the title of the talk, um, this is going to be a little bit different. It's exploration focused, and it's really building on the talks that we've done at Diggers over the last um, short period of time. Um, before I move into it, though, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land from where I'm speaking, and I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land which we explore at Haveron, the Mardu people, and pay my respects to the elders past, present and emerging. So this is our disclaimer slide. Um, I won't go into any detail or refer you that to our website. So our growth strategy is um, it's about leveraging off our mining and exploration capability, our exploration technology and innovation, and leveraging off our collaborative partnerships. And by doing that, we've been able to have delivered significant growth for the company over the last 12 months to two years. And the three key areas that we're focused is in the um, Haveron project, which is located 45 kilometres east of Telfer, in northern Western Australia in a joint venture with Greatland Gold. Uh, the Red Chris Project in the Golden Triangle in northern British Columbia in Canada, and that's a joint venture with Imperial Metals. And then within our growth pipeline, and our growth pipeline contains a number of early stage projects, and we really see those as more of our long-term growth strategy. So these three boxes on this slide really sum up the way that Newcrest do our exploration and it's all about delivering value in the now, in the immediate future and long term and ensuring the company always has a pipeline of growth opportunities. So our strategy is pretty simple. It's all about looking deeper and opening up new search spaces. To use a term that John Horonsky always talks to me about, it's about resetting the exploration maturity clock. So what can you do different to give you more advantages in the search for new deposits? We target belts where we can find higher value deposits and we target belts where we can bring something to it by, with our experiences and capability and something that's beneficial to our partners. Presently, we've got two main focus areas, the Patterson and WA, where we've got the Telfer operation and the Haveron project, the Golden Triangle in British Columbia, which is centred on Red Chris, and our strategies in these areas is pretty simple. It's all about regrowing the resource base so that we can leverage off our existing infrastructure. We're also exploring undercover for low sulfidation epithermal vein systems in the Great Basin in Nevada, high sulfidation epithermal systems in Chile. And these are our longer term growth options. Um, and what we're doing in those regions is really building our knowledge 
and then using that the foundation for future discoveries. We've also got a presence in Ecuador in South America, and that is through our equity placements in Lundine Gold and Sol Gold. Ecuador is probably the most underexplored portion of the Andes, but from the exploration that has been done, there is significant evidence of large deposits in this country. So why does Newcrest look deeper? Um, well, it's pretty simple. Our feeling is that the top 100 to 200 metres in outcrop areas or our traditional search areas is pretty well exhausted. So if you're trying to find the deposits that Newcrest needs to find, we're going to struggle. However, if you go into these regions with a different view and start dropping your um, search space and start looking deeper and in turn look undercover, there's still some great opportunities to be made or great discoveries. And I think if you look at, I, I think one of the good things really over the last couple of years has been the great exploration success stories coming out of Australia. And it's from companies applying this approach to their exploration has led to that success. And probably the best example is the Havron discovery by Greatland, who um, were willing to drill under 400 metres of cover, draw holes up to a kilometre. And the rewards for both companies out of that has been fantastic for both Greatland and Newcrest. Newcrest has a history itself of um, deep exploration success. We probably started this journey over, well, well over 20 years at Telfer in the early 90s and then followed that up at Cadia in New South Wales. And then we've been building on that story since those days and, and to this day we have emerging deeper um, exploration success. And it's interesting when we now revisit those provinces, and in fact we've still got a few of those provinces, um, key thing that they've all got is we put our foot early on big metal systems and then started looking deeper under those um, environments. So that we could transform those deposits into mines, Newcrest developed its underground mining capability, in particularly our bulk underground mining capability. And that gives us a huge advantage in the exploration space. It means that whatever we can find, we can extract and extract profitably. And I would give you the example of our Cadia East operation in New South Wales, a large-scale underground mine, which is an absolutely fantastic operation for the company. So our present story, or the, the most recent exploration success, has obviously been at Haveron. And we've got a new story starting to emerge from our Red Chris project on a, on a prospect called Eastridge. And so what I'll do now is just briefly take you through both of those areas. So starting with Havron, Havron is located within the Patterson province in, in North WA. It's located 45 kilometres east of Telfer and it's under 420 metres of cover and it's obviously a joint venture with Greatland. And what Newcrest has done is since entering into the joint venture just over two years ago, it's hit the ground running. Um, we've had a pretty aggressive drilling program in place and we've drilled over 180,000 metres of drilling in that period of time, which is, I think, a phenomenal effort when you consider that we've had to deal with a uh, COVID pandemic, um, restriction on border travels, and then a very big wet season, we've been able to manage to keep going. And I think that's a huge reflection on the team up there that um, I think have just done an amazing job. And we've got a few of those geologists in the audience today and, you know, we can't thank them enough for what they do. Um, but that work has been successful in outlining a large zone of mineralisation which led to the delivery of the inferred or the initial inferred reserves for the project in December last year, which is um, 3.4 million ounces of gold and just over 160,000 tonnes of copper. Um, we've got a growth program in place right now, and that is all about how do we grow that resource base. And I've, I've got a slide coming up, which will talk about that in more detail. But also, we're just not looking at Haveron. The question we've got is, is there more Haverons in the district? And we believe the style of mineralisation we're seeing at Haveron would probably lend itself to perform in clusters. So the question is, where is the other ones? So we've got two active joint ventures in the region, um, one with Antipa Resources and the other with Greatland. And we've got to say straight away that they are great partners to work with. And actually, we love collaborating with them because they're technically strong groups. And both of those projects are managed by those companies. And right now we've got drill rigs churning away our drilling targets undercover. So this is um, this is Haveron. So 
This is projecting the geology to or a plan view looking down, straight down on the deposit. So this is probably about 800 metres below the surface. So what we've seen so far, as we said, we've got 400 metres of cover and then sitting below that, we've got mineralisation to at least 800 metres below that and that mineralisation is still open. So what it looks like is that the deposit is centred on a northwest trending corridor of calc silicate alteration, and that's that lighter coloured body. Um, and that is surrounded by bedded sediments. Now, the intensity of the alteration within that zone is variable, but the alteration and the um, mineralisation is centred around the a northwest trending body of diorite dikes, which is shown there in green. You can just make it out. Um, it sits just where it says the northern breccia target. Um, the mineralisation and the resources are predominantly hosted within, at this stage, within the crescent, what we refer as the southeast crescent zone, which is that large curved shape, red shape. And basically what it is, is when you, if you were to stretch that out, um, just below the unconformity, it's about five to 600 metres long, about 20 metres wide. It's got a funnel shape. So as you go deeper, by the time you're about 800 metres into it, it's down to about 200 metres. But what is intriguing is as we're getting deeper, we're actually seeing some significant grade and some of the better intercepts at depth are shown on this slide. Um, also shown on this slide, so you get a feel for the, you know, the distribution of mineralisation, is all the drill holes below 4,400 metre RL with plus one gram intercepts. So again, it gives you a feel for the extent of the mineralisation. Um, the deposit itself um, is associated with variable amounts of sulphide, quartz and carbonate that forms either in, in breaches or vein infill. And the picture here on the slide is sort of typical um, Haveron style mineralisation. So this is, um, so as I said before, we've got a growth program in place. Um, and this is all about um, progressing um, a bunch of exploration targets or testing a, a series of exploration targets to support potential resource growth. And there's three main areas that we're looking at. Now, before we look down on the crescent, now we're looking into the crescent. So this is a cross section. Um, that purple shape is roughly the resource dimensions. Um, and what I draw your attention to is the drilling that's sitting below that area. And you can see some of the significant intercepts that we're seeing at those depths. Now that mineralisation is still open. Um, and so the drilling program that we've got doing right now is trying to define the extent of the higher grade and then the continuity of the mineralisation. In addition to that, we're exploring a wrong long, if we refer to the middle panel, um, what we refer to as the Haveron um, Northwest Trending Corridor. In this corridor, we've got two zones of higher grade mineralisation, one referred to as the Northern Breccia and then the one right at the top of the panel, it, it, well, changes its name, but it's um, the Northwest Pod. And what we're doing in there is now drilling around those to define the footprint of the higher grade um, and also to see whether we can get that corridor to link into one bigger zone of mineralisation. The other thing on that slide worth pointing out is the Eastern Breccia target. Um, early days on this target, um, it's only we've only got a handful of number of holes into it. So we still don't understand the geological controls and the dimensions of the system, um, but we're pretty encouraged by what we're seeing out there, some good intercepts and presence of higher grade. And that raises the question, are we dealing with another Northwest corridor? So right now we are testing that concept. And then finally, we're also going to test a bunch of um, geophysical targets, both gravity and magnetic features, which are somewhat similar to Haveron, within the footprint of the Haveron system. So this is all about, are there more Haverons floating around Haveron? Um, so that really is what we're focused on the next 12 months, and we're looking forward to um, see what comes out of our drilling programs. So if we now jump um, across the Pacific Ocean to our Red Chris project in British Columbia in the Golden Triangle, and first of all, the Red Chris is located within the traditional territory of the Taltan Nation, and we are honoured to work together with the Taltan in a cooperative and respectful long-term relationship. Um, as we said before, this is located in the Golden Triangle, and the reason why it's called a Golden Triangle 
is that there's over 270 million ounces of gold, um, and this is an emerging gold province. The project Red Chris is centred on one of the higher grade um, copper gold porphyry systems in the district. Um, and when Newcrest entered this project through acquiring 70% um, of the project from Imperial Metals, who are our joint venture partners. Um, within this project, we had, when we entered in from an exploration point of view, we had two key things to do. The first one was to confirm the high grade that Imperial had previously found, and we managed to do that. Um, and that, that helped us deliver Newcrest's first or initial resource for Red Chris, which we announced in March this year. And then the second challenge that we got given which is what every geologist or exploration manager is, is given, is you've got to grow the resource. And so what we can say is over the last few months, we've been pretty successful in meeting that challenge and we've extended the Porphyry Corridor by about four to 500 metres and found another higher grade zone called Eastridge. And I'll just show you that in a sec. Um, we've also pretty excited that we've captured the nearby GJ property, which is part of the Red Chris Joint Venture. Um, and that is situated on about 10 kilometres of prospective porphyry corridor that hasn't been explored deep. So again, applying our strategies of looking deeper that we're hopeful that we can find additional high grade in this zone um, in the GJ property. So this is the, the Red Chris district. This is a sort of long section which runs parallel to the porphyry corridor. And what's shown, obviously, is the open pit um, operation at the top. And then sitting below that is our leapfrog um, grade shells. So the pink is plus greater than one gram equivalent and the purple is plus two grams equivalent. Now, when we went into this joint venue, what we had to do was confirm that big blob, which is the east zone. Now, Imperial, most of their drilling was vertical. Um, so what we've done is carried out a series of infill drilling program over the last 18 months, which has demonstrated the continuity and the extent of that higher grade. When we finished this drilling, um, which was only late last year, we started doing step out drilling along the corridor. Now what's shown on that diagram in the shady blocks is the resource boundaries. And essentially what we've now done is extended the porphyry corridor about 500 metres east of that boundary and also found a new high grade zone referred to as the East Ridge and some of the better drill intercepts is shown on the slide and that's what it looks like. And this is the, one of the, well, I think it is the best drill intercept outside of the East Zone. So we've got about four drill rigs sitting on this project prospect right now, trying to demonstrate its um, or define its continuity and extent. What's interesting about um, East Ridge is that the porphyry system at Red Chris was bounded by a thing called the South Boundary Fault. And the feeling was that mineralisation stopped against it or was offset. But what we've done is just stepped across that fault and the porphyry systems have kept going. So that's pretty, pretty exciting for us. Interesting thing as well about East Ridge, it doesn't have a surface expression um, and there is shallow holes, historic holes sitting above it that only have very weak mineralisation. So... Um, it's learning what those footprints are. But again, what this demonstrates is what we like to do, and that's put our foot on big districts and then start searching around those districts and because we believe that the rewards will come. And what we've got to say right now is we're pretty happy with what we've um, achieved at Red Chris to this, to this day, and we do love hunting around porphyry systems. So, look, the other thing that we do in um, Newcrest is in our exploration group, we're always being challenged and we challenge ourselves, how can we do things better? How do we, how do we, the two mantras really, how can we be smarter and faster? And our CEO is a great believer and a great challenger of us in that space. So we we'll always think about how can you do it differently? And one of the two, we'll give you two examples. One of the ones we're working on right now is the one that everyone knows, that there's discoveries being, are waiting to be found in historical data. So the big question is, how can you attack that data smarter? Um, and so what we've done is that we've actually stepped outside of the exploration industry and partnered with a subject matter expert that actually has got a has worked for the US um, defence systems or forces. 
and we've taken their knowledge of handling big data sets on a country scale and applying that to um, gold exploration. So what we've done in Australia is we've compiled, validated and interrogated the Australian-wide public geochemical data set to identify and rank pr prospective signatures. So that image on the, the map, there's about 12 million surface samples and over 3 million drill holes. Now, anyone that's, I'm sure a lot of companies have done this, but it is quite a big exercise and we've tried to apply machine learning um, to this to be able to ingest the data a lot quicker. I'd also like to take the opportunity to shout out to Geoscience Australia and to the various state um, bodies that provide this data. This is critical to future exploration in countries like Australia and globally, but really important in Australia if we're trying to find these bigger deposits. And, you know, it's one thing that I think as an industry, we've always got to keep pressurising and putting our foot forward in front of governments to keep funding those groups so that we get to benefit of that work. What we're doing now is applying the next generation of global scale machine learning um, and what that's all about signature hunting. So how do we find the vectors that will lead us into new discoveries? Right now we're doing a big tr um, training exercise in the Ulgan looking at all the hyperspectral and geochemical signatures of all the ore deposits and doing a similar exercise in the Macquarie Arc. And then once we've done that exercise, then the hunt begins. Um, we have done it on a trial, small-scale version, looking using hyperspectral work in Nevada and South America, and we're quite um, happy with the, what we've been able to achieve. So this is all about what do you do with all this data and how can we use it better. The other um, area that we're working on, and this is our shed, our new shed or um, core shed at Red Chris, and um, what's shown on this slide here is our two bought long ear true scan units and what they are is XRF instruments um, and this is part of our core logging process at Red Chris. So basically the drillers drop the core off in the morning, um, the core moves through these two units, um, the core's photo photoed and then it'll scan with XRF and what that gives us is real time metal values at the time of drilling. And that we're, is so good to have because it's allowing us to make real time decisions which is really important when you're drilling one and a half, two kilometre holes, because you're always thinking about where do I go next? Where's that drill rig going? Um, and the other thing it's doing is obviously, as the industry right now is hemorrhaging with delays and assay turnarounds, it's getting us ahead of that. And let me tell you, over the last couple of months or the last three or four months, this has been fantastic in that space. The other thing though it does is it allows us to log smarter. So it gives us, again, the information before we log, so our geologists have got the geochemistry before they start. Um, we also then use machine learning to identify basic structures and lithology. So our geologists then know where to focus their efforts. So we're trying to move away from that metre by metre logging into more focused value add logging and really speed up the whole process. So look, that's just a couple of examples that we're using. Um, TrueScan, as I think it's been at Red Chris from pretty much the first drill holes that we've drilled, and we've been on a great journey with Bort Longyear about developing that technology, and we've now got an instrument um, doing a similar exercise or just starting that journey up at um, uh, Havron. So, look, that is the presentation for today. Um, our aim is to deliver value through our growth and exploration strategies. Um, and it really is based around what we call our three pillars. The first is partnerships. One thing that Newcrest, and you probably notice in what we do, is I think most of our projects are joint ventures or option deals. And it's the way we like to work because it lets us, first of all, capture good ground, but also work with some really good groups. And we're always happy um, to share our knowledge and learn knowledge from other groups. So that, that is uh, what we do. And as we always say in presentations, if there's anyone in the audience or listening online that has a project that you'd like someone to come in and have a look at, we're more than welcome to look for, to have a review your project because we're always looking for something new. Um, we leverage off our exploration DNA um, and our technology. And then the one that really we believe sets us a little bit different is our mining capabilities. So not only can we explore deeper, we can turn those all around. So look, 
that's the presentation today. We always, I always like the opportunity to talk about our exploration story because we think it's pretty exciting. So um, thank you for the opportunity to present to you today. Thank you for that excellent presentation, Fraser, and with that substantial exploration program that you've uh, told us about today. I'm wondering if we could have a, a question. We've got time for one question. Perhaps there's a question from the audience. If we don't have that, um, with such a significant exploration program, Fraser, do you have um, the similar challenges that other resource companies are having in the marketplace with the increasing cost of mining services and perhaps the challenges with assay labs? Oh, look, we're, yeah, we're like everyone right now. I mean, our drilling costs, every time we review a drilling contract, they just go up. Um, and also the assay turnaround, as you said, I mean, we, we try and have a mantra of 21-day turnaround. Um, that's for our gold and big suite of elements that we do. We're now out to 40, 60 days, and it's, you know, it's the same story as everyone else. The other thing that really, the other big one is just the drainage on capability. Um, it's getting good drillers, good geologists, um, good support staff. That, that is also the big challenge for us as well, and I think it's a huge challenge for the industry. And it's, you know, it all comes back to companies like ourselves to make sure that we are developing you know the next generation of geologists and drillers so that the industry does have that pipeline but you know it's a combination of what you said that shortage and and um, shortage of resources and that price pressure which really keeps us keeps us moving well we will on that note we will um, say thank you very much Fraser and thanks for beaming in from Melbourne and um, we'll move on thank you thank you